Hi folks, this is Jake. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at this book, God's Philosophers. And we've just looked at the way um, skeptics like Francis Bacon, uh, sorry, scholars like Francis Bacon, Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and Protestants demonized the Middle Ages. In the 18th century, French writers like Voltaire, 1694 to 1778, joined in the attack. They had their own issues with the Catholic Church in France, which they derided as reactionary and cahoots with the absolutist monarchy. Voltaire and his fellow philosophers lauded progress in reason and science. They needed a narrative to show what mankind was moving forward, and the story they produced was intended to show the Church in a bad light. Medieval philosophy, bastard daughter of Aristotelian philosophy, badly translated and understood, wrote Voltaire that caused more error for reason and good education than the Huns and the Vandals. His contemporary, uh, Rond D. Albert, in 1717-83, edited an immense encyclopedia and became the epitome of philosophy's achievement. Uh, in that encyclopedia, the Middle Ages were denigrated. John William Draper and Thomas Huxley introduced this thesis to English readers in the 19th century. It was given intellectual respectability through the support of Andrew Dickinson White, 1832-1918, to president of Cornell University. The hordes of footnotes that mill around at the bottom of each page of his book, A History of the Warfare of Science with Theology, give the illusion of meticulous scholarship, but anyone who checks his references will wonder how he could have maintained his opinions if he had read as much as he claimed to have done. The great weight of the assault of the Middle Ages carried on into the 20th century. Popular historians based their work on previous popular histories and perpetuated the myth that the period was an interruption to mankind's progress. Television shows by Carl Sagan, James Burke and Jacob Boronsky handed the thesis on to a new generation. Even when someone discovered evidence of reason or progress in the 14th or 15th centuries, it could easily be labelled early renaissance, so as to preserve the negative connotations of the adjective medieval. The fight back began 100 years ago with the work of a French physician and historian called Pierre Duhem in 1861 to 1916. While researching an unrelated matter, he came across a vast body of unread medieval manuscripts. What Duhem found in these dusty tombs amazed him. He quickly realised that science in the Middle Ages had been sophisticated highly regarded and essential to later developments. His work was carried forward by the American Lynn Thorndike, 1882-1965, and the German Annelise Mayer, 1905-71, who refined and expanded it. Today, the doyens of medieval science are Edward Grant and David Lindbergh. They have now retired, but their students already occupy exalted places in the universities of North America. As scholars explore more and more manuscripts, they reveal achievements of the natural philosophers of the medieval ages that are far, that are ever more remarkable. So when we hear people denigrating the Middle Ages, scholarship, the last 100 years, actually has uncovered a lot of material that's showing us that the medieval, medieval period was actually the foundation of a lot of what we see as modern science today.